and good morning from Professor Simon. I thought I'd just like to welcome all you new patrons to my channel and maybe explain a bit about what my channel is really about and why you're going to see some amazing films coming up in the future. I think the whole essence of what I do is the stories behind the news. I don't like people lying to us, whether it's corporations, governments or the military. And so often stories that present themselves to you on television are not the full story. They've been in that horrible term economical with the truth. They are lying to us. So on your behalf, I dig behind the news. What's really happening in astronomy, in physics, in aviation, in broadcast? The hidden history, the histories and mysteries, the secret science that is actually the truth in the world. So today I'm going to talk about one of the most disappointing things that has ever happened in my life, and that is the total demise of Boeing. Boeing have blown it. They have shot themselves in their own foot. There's a brilliant phrase, probably British, which you might have heard, and that's called they threw the baby out with the bathwater. Let me explain. Boeing aircraft are the world's best airplane maker. People used to say, I'm not flying if it's not on a Boeing. But today, people prefer to go on an Airbus or an Embraer. They're not going on Boeings. So what really happened to Boeing? I started looking at the Boeing 737 MAX 8 after the disastrous crashes and I wanted to understand, first of all, what went wrong with the aircraft? It was so surprising. But over the years, I've begun to realize that the problem isn't just in a fatally flawed aircraft. But that disaster is much bigger than I originally thought. The real disaster is what's happening at Boeing. This was my turning point about Boeing. I made this film and I still believe what they did was so wrong. The MAX 8 737 was marketed as a legacy, easy to fly 737 that needed no retraining. That was wrong. They tried to fix it by a piece of software called MCAS, which they weren't honest to the FAA about. It's a legacy of horror. And let's not forget, over 400 people died. So let's remind ourselves how Boeing sold their Max 8 series. The demand for something new, volatile markets, new competitors, cost control. You deal with challenges like these every day and you conquer them. Your business decisions at crucial points position your airline for future success. The Boeing 737 Max is one of those decisions. Why? Let's start with efficiency. The MAX uses 14% less fuel than current 737s. That's a lot less fuel. A lot less. How'd we do that? Ingenuity. Ingenuity here, here, and here. Like our incredible new winglet. It's now even more advanced. It uses natural laminar flow technology. What's that? Here's someone smart to explain it. Natural laminar flow technology reduces fuel consumption by controlling the growth. Never mind. We don't have time for that. But the results? It shaves off even more fuel usage. Want more results? The 737-8 can carry 12 more passengers in a two-class configuration than its competitor. That's 12 passengers on every route, every day, every quarter, every year throughout the lifespan of your fleet. Now let's talk reliability. The 737 has a reputation for being reliable. This reliable. And the MAX takes reliability even farther. Literally. This plane doesn't control your route options, it empowers them. And on those routes, the plane is always here, not here or here. This all translates into 8% lower operating costs, which means CEOs like the MAX really like the MAX. What about passengers? They like it too. They told us to build this, our Boeing Sky Interior. They said make it feel spacious, like this spacious. Passengers buy tickets to spacious. You know what else customers like? The environment. So do you, so do we. New engine advances have led to a 14% reduction in fuel and carbon emissions. And there's less noise. When the plane is here, it's like this down here. But what does all this mean when you're running an airline? It means for once, 
your decision is clear. The new 737 MAX. Not on safety features, not on engineering brilliance, which they obviously put into it, but on the profit that airlines would make. And it's the story that keeps giving. This week, there's a damning new report which confirms what I've always thought really went wrong. A former senior manager at Boeing 737 plant in Seattle has raised new concerns over the safety of the company 737 series. In this new report, Ed Pearson claims that further investigation of electrical issues and production quality problems at the 737 factory is badly needed. Pearson claims that the regulators who have now released the 737 MAX 8 to fly again have largely ignored factors which he believes may have played a direct role in the accidents. He explicitly links the disasters to a disaster that's happened at Boeing in Renton. At a congressional hearing, he said, as a person who works for Boeing, he won't fly on a Max 8. He describes Boeing's production facility as chaotic and dysfunctional. He believes staff were under pressure from managers to complete aircraft as quickly as possible. And his biggest revelation is he believes that the crashes were caused by production problems that were inherently in and still are in all Max 8s. And he pinpoints those problems in the complex electrical system of the plane. Okay, we know that the MCAS software was fatally flawed, but this report goes much deeper. I remember reporting on the Lion Air crash, and one of the most revealing things to me as a pilot was that maintenance had changed the angle of attack sensor the day before, and that led to a software problem and returning the aircraft in an unsafe condition. That fatal combination led to the crash, but hang on a minute. What Pearson is saying, and listen to this really carefully, is it's not MCAS's fault. The reason the plane crashed was because another system had broken and that kicked MCAS into operation. So he claims that the inherent problems were built into the MAX 8 aircraft. So where does that leave us today? In my humble opinion, it leaves us up shit creek. The FAA, European and worldwide flight regulation authorities have allowed the MAX 8 back into service because the MCAS is fixed and some additional training is mandated. But that's not the problem. And this guy, Sully Sullenberger, agrees with him. He calls the MAX 8 fatally flawed. And both of them believe there are still unanswered questions about what really happen. So sitting in parking lots, sitting in ramps in giant rows are these possibly fatally flawed Max 8s which are going to take off from an airport near you any day now. Boeing say the problem is fixed. Of course they say that, but I say this. I really hope that the Max 8 aircraft proves itself to be a safe aircraft, but the real danger is still out there. And in my subjective, humble opinion, the problem is Boeing, a giant of an aviation company who threw the baby out with the bathwater and took profit over safety, who let their marketing department pander to airline profits, rather than listen to their established engineering base who always put safety first. So that's my story from behind the news. When you see the Max 8 sitting at the Ryan Air gate, understand that although it might be superficially fixed, there might be deep flaws lurking inside your holiday flight. I'm deeply saddened by what Boeing have done. The relatives of the dead from the Lion Air 
and the Ethiopian Boeing MAX 8 crashes are pressing for it not to be rushed back into service. They are insisting that a deeper, systemic investigation into what lies inside all Boeing 737 MAX 8s is carried out before it takes to the sky again. The truth is out there. Thank <laughs> you.